Greetings to everyone. This is Siddhar, Department of Civil Engineering, Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology. Today we will see you about the topic Crack with Calculation. Uh, basically, in any flexure number like uh, beams, uh, this crack width is calculated to satisfy the limit state of service ability. So, we are taking into account our IS456. Right, our IS456 actually gives uh, certain limits for our crack width. Right, with if the limit is sorry, if the crack is within the limit, then that is considered to be safe, and if it is beyond our limit, then that is not going to be considered as safe. The crack width of the flexure member generally depends on the following quantities. If you are having a crack width on, an, on your beam member, then generally the crack width depends on the following major factors like tensile stress in the longitudinal bars, how much tensile stress is developed on your longitudinal bars, thickness of the concrete cover, how much thickness is given to your concrete cover, then diameter and spacing of the longitudinal bars. Right? Then depth of the member and location of your neutral axis, bond strength and tensile strength of the concrete. So these factors actually contribute to the crack with, that is being developed in a, in a structure. Uh, in reality, if you take any structure, there will not be any structure without any cracks. All structures will have cracks. Actually, this IS code allows uh, a certain areas where we can develop cracks. It doesn't say that there is no, there should not be no cracks developed in the concrete. There is no such. Uh, uh, codal provisions. Our code actually allows cracks to be formed. So if the cracks are forming, what is the probability of them getting very bigger or what is the probability of that damaging particular whole structure? So we have to study about that. So for that particular area, our crack width is limited. Right? Our IS-4 physics actually limits the crack width. As discussed in the previous slides, we have this IS-4 physics 2000 and in that we have annex RF which gives a procedure to determine the flexural crack width. Note this point, it is only for uh, flexural crack width. We are talking about flexure members only. It is not applicable for compression members. As compression members cracks are generally related to shear cracks and other part, we don't deal with that. For flexural members, this crack width calculation is given. The design crack with WCR at a selected level on the surface of the section with maximum moment. We have to take the maximum moment is given by the formula where WCR is equal to 3 times alpha CR strain of M 1 plus 2 ACR minus C minimum divided by H by X. We will see about the notations here very clearly where ACR is the shortest distance from the selected level on a surface to the longitudinal bar. We are going to determine the distance from the selected level on the surface to the longitudinal bar that should be the shortest distance. And C minimum is the minimum clear cover to the longitudinal bar. You have to give our minimum cover to the longitudinal bar. Then H is the total depth of the member. You have to take care of the total uh, depth of the member including your cover. Then X is the depth of the neutral axis and uh, EM is the average strain at the selected level. So we are going to talk about the strain levels. And if you are able to calculate all these values and substitute, substitute in this formula, you will get the flexural crack with this crack with this on a very empirical basis theoretical basis it does not give the exact crack with on your side this gives an idea right using this formula we can formulate an idea about how the crack is going to be placed there as discussed in the previous slide we will see how this acr is calculated according to is4 physics uh, this ACR is nothing but uh, the crack with uh, location. Like if you are taking one surface and the surface shortest distance to the minimum minimum distance or shortest to the distance to the nearest longitudinal bar. So here we will see the location of crack with calculation can be at the soft fit on sides or it can be on either side of a beam. Right? The value of ACR depends on the selected level. The following sketches show at uh, at the bottom corner, point of the socket and point on the side. So if you take this as your neutral axis, this is going to be a neutral axis. This is your longitudinal bars. Okay, you can have any type of surface. Like I have, I can have taken A as a surface. I can have taken B as a surface. I can have taken C as a surface. So for this point A, this will be my shortest distance. Okay, this will be my ACR one. So if you take this point, this will this will be my ACR2. If you are talking about C, this will be my ACR3. So this shorter distance is calculated as per this diagram because if you are having many number of longitudinal bars and if you are calculating at various sites, right, this calculation will be done as per the diagram. Uh, if uh, still the diagram which we have shown in the previous slide is a little bit confusing and if you are not able to obtain any values there is one simple geometrical formula which can be applied to get the value of ACR generally this is being uh, used this gives an uh, almost same value identical value to the one we have calculated in the previous uh, diagrams uh, this this gives a more of a mathematical approach where ACR is given by root of S divided by 2 whole square plus DC square minus DB divided by 2 where db is the diameter of your longitudinal bars. We are talking about our longitudinal bars diameter and db is the effective cover. 
right that is the uh, it is the total value that is uh, effective cover the half of your cover plus your longitudinal bars direction to neutral axis and s is the center to center spacing of longitudinal bars if you calculate all these values and substitute all values in this formula you will get the value of acr this value is almost identical to the value which we have gotten in the previous slide that is using our diagrams and uh, here we will see about the evaluation of X and Epsilon M. The values of X and Epsilon M are calculated based on the sectional analysis under service loads. Right? The sectional analysis should be considered the tension cat by the uncracked concrete in between two cracks. We are going to talk about the section analysis where the tension carried by the uncracked concrete in between two cracks. Right? This is given by a simple formula. If you take our ellipse on M is given by ellipse on 1 minus B to H minus X, A minus X divided by 3 times of E, S, A, S and D minus X. Uh, in the next slide, we will deal with what are these notations used here. Uh, here A is nothing but the distance from the compression phase of the level to at which the crack width is calculated. We are going to calculate the distance from the compression phase of our beam to the level at the which the crack, crack is going to be calculated and H when the crack width is calculated at the soffit that is at the bottom. And B is nothing but the width of the rectangular zone and D is the effective depth of longitudinal reinforcement and A is the area of non-pre-stressed reinforcement. AB is the area of pre-stressing steel, particularly if you are talking about pre-stressing steel, this formula is being used. If not, uh, it can be ignored. Then ES is the modulus of elasticity of non-pre-stressed steel and EP is the modulus of elasticity of pre-stressed steel. Right? And uh, epsilon 1 is the strain at the selected level based on the crack sectional analysis and epsilon s is a strain in the longitudinal reinforcement. This all values can be calculated and if you are substituting the values in the formula, you will be able to get the epsilon 1. As discussed in the previous slides, we know how to theoretically calculate our uh, crack width. So if you are able to theoretically calculate the crack width, then we have a certain code book like IS 18, sorry, 8, uh, 1343, 1918, class 19.3.2. This specifies the limit of crack width such as the appearance and durability of the structural element are not affected. If you are going to use one uh, flexural member, what is the crack width that is being uh, uh, allowed? If the crack width is within this limit, then that is not a problem. So that uh, specification is given and that specification is so actually the crack width should be less than or equal to 0.2 mm for moderate and mild environment and less than or equal to 0.1 mm for severe environment. So this has to be very clearly seen. If the crack width is going beyond this given limit, the section has to be redesigned or if it is a constructed one, it has to be demolished and a new section has to be uh, constructed. Thank you.